Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hi, John. Welcome everybody to a, a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. You know, Pastor, on Tuesdays we, we stick to current events that are going around our nation, around the world, and on Thursdays we we would like to I like to ask you questions that return re, uh, pertain to the Bible and and today you know as as we're with everything going around and it's crazy you know I think uh, what can happen is that we misfocus on some one event that's coming up that's extremely important and uh, and I want to ask you what that prophetic event is going to be uh, the significance of it and then my question after that and uh, is. Who will be left over? The left. Who would be left behind, and what can they expect to experience? Uh, you know, that's a big question to to handle in five minutes. Um, you know, the obvious answer to that is the first question is that um, the next event on the prophetic calendar, as I understand it, is the rapture of the church. You know, there there's really nothing else that needs to take place. Um, before that, uh, you know, can take place. And so the next, um, the next prophecy to be fulfilled will be that, you know, we shall, not, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. Mm -hmm. You know, that the Lord is uh, going to descend with a shout, the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are remaining shall be caught up together with them in the air and, and we're going to be that way for the rest of eternity, be with the Lord. So the next event, as we know it, uh, is going to be the rapture of the church. And so it can happen at any moment. It can happen um, in the time that's unexpected. And so that's one of the reasons why the church is, is told to awaken out of sleep. That's why the church is told that the time is nearer than when we first believed. So that event, this taken away of the church, um, is uh, is the next uh, next prophecy to be fulfilled, and it can happen again at any time, because there are no other prophecies that that pertain to that event that need to be fulfilled. And so the importance of focusing on a life that is set apart for Christ is, as we see it winding down, the the if there is a you know any signs or. We, we don't know the date or time, but as we see things starting to wind down, the importance of being set apart for Christ is highly important. Well, you know, John, one of the things that I like to highlight when I share out of the Bible on this particular subject, as you've heard me share this many times, it's not original with me. I was taught this um, by Walter Martin. I used to sit in a, a class with Walter Martin, it was somebody who, by the way, didn't believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, but he was an excellent um, apologist. And I sat under his teaching for almost a year uh, when I was a young believer. And, and Walter is the one who really influenced me when it came to um, being aware of the days and the seasons and all. And he pointed out that in Matthew chapter 24, that when Jesus was uh, there on the temple, temple area, and his men began to point out the beautiful, magnificent buildings there on the temple, that he said, not one of these stones uh, are gonna remain, uh, but they're all gonna be torn down and everything's gonna be destroyed. And they, uh, they approach him later and they say, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming? And Walter Martin influenced me because he said, notice that the question is, what will be the sign? He didn't say what will be the signs there in Matthew 24. He said, what will be the sign? And so Jesus, no less than three times, Walter said four times, no less than three times, more than likely four times, said that the sign, the singular sign, the important sign, the key sign is deception. He said, and therefore take heed that you are not deceived. And he speaks of many will come in my name and say, I am Christ. So he said that the key sign, the sign, is going to be the, uh, the presence of deception, the false teachers. And, and we're living in a time now that false teachers are uh, not simply the ones that we, over, 
the years the church has been aware of, you know, starting in the very early days of the church through the Gnostic heresy that entered in or through the Judaism where they tried to bring you under grace and law simultaneously. Um, no, what we're seeing today um, is, is not necessarily as obvious as those who claim that Christ is the first creation of God or a God of this particular universe or, or one of a thousand different variations, just a good teacher or maybe a prophet or whatever. No, those things have always existed, but I think that the deception, the, the deception that has infiltrated the church at this time is a deception that is posed by those who claim to know Christ and may very well know him. I'm not saying that they they are not believers. And that's what makes them even more dangerous, but they that they inaccurately divide the word of truth. And those who are who are adding their opinions to scripture or 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 changing the uh, the meaning of the scripture through their uh, illustrations or humor or or through not emphasizing the right things that are being said in that passage and then moving off into one of their pet theories or pet doctrines i think that that that's the great deception too it's it's not simply to say that that jesus didn't come in the that god didn't come in the flesh as christ um or denial of the trinity things of that nature, it's it's more a polluting of what is actually theologically precise in Scripture. It's polluting that and uh, transforming it from, from what was intended to be said to conform to something that these false teachers, these people who may not even intend to be false teachers, but unfortunately they have become that, uh, teaching not complete truth, but some things that are admixtures of truth and error. And that to me is is something I see today, especially in the in the uh, craving of some. Uh, and unfortunately, again, we see this fairly often to be the most important or successful or you know best known Bible teacher. And some of them go on on TV. Some of them will go on radio. Some of them will find various means for for them to present their their thoughts of what scripture is saying and and they're the ones that I'm I'm concerned about because they may not be full on heretics but they're misdirecting the people and and are not are not teaching the people that the most important person in the universe is Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that that I do see where unfortunately um, someone will walk out of a Bible study saying what a great speaker this guy is or what a great band we have but have you become more like the great God that we serve and you know I know that's old fashioned and I know people may say oh you sound like a bitter old man and this and that and I would hope that's not true I would, I would hope that after over 50 years of walking with the Lord I, I would hope I would hope that uh that what I'm saying is 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 recognized as a genuine concern. And you know, it, it, what you mentioned the 50 years of ministry, you see that sign of deception even greater today. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And so we can, and not that we're you know trying to pick dates out or anything. This event of the rapture is potentially at the threshold. Well, you know, it's closer than when we first believed. Right. You know, and yes, it it is it is the next thing to happen. And so I do, I do anticipate that, and I do pray that that uh, that I'm able to be alive when Jesus does return for what, us. What a great event to even experience! Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I know there's going to be some that may say, "Well, you don't find the word rapture in the Bible." Of course not. It's in Latin, or it's even in Greek harpazo, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's the snatching and the taking of the way. Yeah. But Pastor, quickly, if you can share, uh, who will be the leftovers? <laughs> From those, because there's gonna be people who do not make the rapture. Yeah. Uh, and what will they potentially experience? Well, to say that quickly, um, those who are not believers when Christ comes for the church are the ones who are the leftovers. But during that time called the tribulation, where the uh, Antichrist rises to a position of domination and he has his false prophet who works miracles and causes people to worship the beast and all of that. There will be a time of trial on the church, the, um, the, the, a series of various 
judgments that progress from from bad to to horrible, you know, and uh, that will be taking place. Uh, the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, the bowl judgments, that will occur escalating until um, till the seven year period is is completed. And so the, there will be a time of evangelism where the Lord is going to still be saving people. They will be awakened to the fact that they lost out on their opportunity to to have escaped the wrath that is falling. And many will come to faith in Christ. It's been said that the greatest revival that humankind has ever experienced will occur during the tribulation. Mm -hmm. There will be many people coming to faith in Christ and ultimately many losing their lives, giving up their lives, and losing their heads, literally beheaded, um, and uh, will enter into into the presence of the Lord as a martyr. But that will be taking place and over the seven years. Not the entire world will be uh, completely devastated of humanity. There will be some who make it through the seven years, but then there's going to be times of judgment between those who have committed themselves in faith to Christ and those who didn't. And so you'll have uh, judgments that will take place for them. And uh, ultimately, then we'll just enter into the period where where we uh, we exist with the Lord Jesus Christ forever. But it's that, that's just a quick summation. But I, you know, somebody has said, I, somebody said, um, I'll just I'll just wait to see what happens in the tribulation. Then I'll give my heart to Christ. And and uh, the comment that is made after that is, what makes you think that you can, uh, under the worst conditions, be a follower of Christ, if you can't be a follower? Of Christ under these conditions and so yeah so somebody who's presuming that they're gonna make it through the tribulation somehow unscathed that's uh that's the height of folly yes and deception <laughs> and deception <laughs> pastor thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this uh, church family I hope you enjoyed this we have our church services on Sunday morning at 8 30 and 10 45 and pastor David you're taking us through the book of Mark yeah and, uh, and so invite a friend and family to come join us. We look forward to that. And, uh, man, we have our Super Bowl breakfast coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, you can still purchase your tickets. You can actually go to the gazebo or go uh, online and purchase those. And we'd love to have you come with us. And so invite your friends and family. We do look forward to having you on Sunday. Pastor, thank you so much for of your course. time. God bless you, church family, and we will talk to you soon.